be recognized and abused, especially with Hammy's hero pool. I talked about it last weekend on the show. I'm going to talk about it again. He played Scarf, Kestrel, and Jewel. These are his top three heroes. If he doesn't get one of these three heroes, he doesn't perform as strongly. The Rhyme comes through for Rogue. It's a very expected pick. We talked about it. Then the Cruel pick uh, fo uh, ban follows. It's a very strong pick already on pod, the original that I expect him to play very aggressive. The Jewel ban comes out though, and this is exactly what I'm talking about, denying Hammy his picks. Not only denying Hammy his picks by you know, banning the Jewel and picking the Kestrel, but Kestrel has been, at least thus far today, the strongest matchups against Rhyme have had a Kestrel on the other side. You know, the one game where it was beaten earlier today in Europe, Kestrel was on the team. The best showing were Gangstars against Team Solo Mid when they the game was extremely close. They had a Kestrel. Kestrel, I think, is one of the answers to a rhyme. It's just a matter of executing a little bit better and finding something else to pair with it in order to try and make it a full counter. Tribe's draft so far is incredibly strong and it's really easy to go unnoticed. The Kestrel pick into the Jewel Band is taken Hammy's top two weapon power picks away from him and when he doesn't have these two picks he goes for the scarf but because they already gave them the rhyme if you go for the scarf that's a double cp composition that you don't want to pick so tribe drafting it really smart rogue are trying to take their time thinking about it and that's why they picked up the lance so that they can last pick the laner with more time there's even the potential to pick up the scarf on the side of the tribe as well that's something we've seen typically go into a rhyme because you can just keep him at arm's length however it's not something that when you think of T Tigers, you don't necessarily think of Scarf. You think of more aggressive, typically melee Kashka. things. Yeah, Kashka, Kashka is the kind of thing you think of. Thing you think of. <laughs> and Grace coming in as the final pick. It's not often that we get to see Grace go all the way through the draft like this. For yeah, sure. and Grace with a Kashka is so strong. It's that it, the quintessential combo that we talk about. Where if you want someone who dives in and gets the divine intervention, while Grace can just hang back on the back lines and be a protector for your carry, and that's gonna be exactly what they can do here. Kashka jumps in, divine intervention for him, and then you have Grace staying on the back lines with the Kestrel to be able to use Holy Novas and Benedictions to keep the Kestrel alive. This is such a strong draft for Tribe. All right, we have an Adagio coming through here for Hami as well, kind of throwing the gauntlet down at Dienzio. Obviously, we know Dienzio really stepped up on the Adagio back at the championship now. Hammy wants to take that one into the game as well. I'm curious though, because Daggio typically is going to be CP, but so is Rhyme. So I don't know where they're going to go with this one. I wonder if they're going to use weapon power Rhyme instead so that they can uh, make their damage output diverse mm -hmm. with two dam different damage sources. The composition coming from Tribe though, this is a traditional composition that works really well for them. I talked last week about how you want to put T-Tigers on an aggressive playmaking hero rather than a passive mm -hmm. one such as the Fortress. I like the, dra the draft coming out from Tribe. And the Adagio with the Rhyme, even if it does go into a weapon Rhyme, you have such a massive slow from the Gift yeah. of Fire proc, and then Rhyme being able to just stick on a target and just build up those stacks. All right, well, it's time to head on into the first game of this series here. Hashtag Vainglory8 on Twitter to let us know whether you're supporting Tribe or whether you want Rogue to take this one. It's time to pass it back over to Jaws and Denominate for game number one. Thank you very much, guys. Here we go. Tribe versus Rogue. Rogue looking so strong right now, but Tribe, they are there. They are waiting, Denomine, to unsettle their throne, unsettle their second seed. Yeah, and one of the most exciting things about this matchup, Jaws, is Flash actually mentioned, you know, very early on in this split that Rogue is going to be one of those teams that everybody needs to watch out for but they're going up against the team that took TSM down at the Unified Championship. So this ought to be a, a fun one to watch. Both teams highly capable. And uh, Max Green taking a bit of damage here. Hey, Max Green, how's it going? Two turret shots and a bit of a bit of prodding from Evil. We'll send him packing for the time being. Elder Train hasn't been started, but Dienzio and T-Tigers are rotating down towards it with Max Green's health bar not looking so pretty. I think uh, Tribe are going to look to maybe back off here. Rogue are aware of this. Yeah, and Rogue has done a pretty good job so far. It was a great spot out by Evol to, uh, you know, get that Githian wall on Max Green underneath that turret. I do think that was a uh, Rogue secure there. It was going over to Pond, the original. And, uh, you know, getting him the gold early is going to be absolutely huge. And with these crystal bits on this rhyme right now, I have to start looking. Is this a double crystal composition we're going to see? Or is Hammy going to pull out some amazing weapon, Adagio? 
I've already seen the weapon pedal. We might as well bring the uh, weapon adagio back, right? Uh, you're saying that. You're saying that, Denomine. And I'm gonna say you're crazy. Although, I would have said you're crazy. Oh, hang on a second in a minute. TNT, a little bit of trouble? Ah, oh, he's good. Impel did land for me, well, but uh, not enough damage to follow that one up. Upon now, but maybe in a little bit of a tussle with Max Green. Chasing him away here is gonna get the root. Max Green's gonna have to be very careful. Pond using those boosts to get after him as well. Shielding, holy no, but does get the stun. Has to back away from the spire. Impel does first miss, but Pond finally picks up the kill and picks up first blood for Rogue. And getting that Triant as well as that first blood on to Pond the original is absolutely hu huge for the side of Rogue. This is really his key hero. This is what Pond plays. He He's made it work both weapon and crystal power. So getting him ahead early is going to be huge because Rhyme has a useful tool in limiting Kashka's mobility, and that's one of Kashka's strongest suits. Yes, the damage that she can provide uh, is absolutely massive, but the ability to get in and out of fights safely is really Kashka's defense in that early and mid-game phase. And if Pan's able to take that away, we could see T-Tigers in a dangerous spot, and now Rogue looking down. I don't know if they saw T-Tigers, though. Maybe they did. Yeah, I th they might have just seen that camp die. I'm not entirely sure, but T-Tigers, yep, yeah, he's going to be sneaky beaky. He's going to be able to get this recall off here in the in the backs of Rogue. Pond just waiting for the Elder Tree to spawn. Perfectly timed, some would say. Now, you'd call me crazy. Oh, no, I'd call you crazy. Sorry, Denominate. I'm not crazy at all. If you said, we're going to see more weapon power pedal, we're going to see more weapon power alpha. Are we going to see Hammy pull out weapon power Adagio? Maybe. I would hope not, but we'd have to wait and see. It's it's rough to try to run a carry like an Adagio or a Rhyme double crystal power, specifically because their their damage source is kind of timed. So Adagio's biggest spike of damage is only really during his empowered attacks. Hold on here, T Tiger is well, sp stealing. Speaking of empowered attacks, yeah, he's going to be able to steal away that healing cab. Evo is going to get chased out as well. Pond already about half HP. So let's just try to chase him up. Evo going very low, has to pop that flask, only just managing to survive Jungle on the shielding it quickly. Yeah, beautiful plays out of Evo there to get out alive. Fortunately for Rogue, nobody did drop there. And uh, now that Evo has got a chance to recall and pick up that life spring as well as the kinetic shield, if he gets in a situation where he is damaged significantly, he will start to heal up a bit over time due to the passive of that life spring. Uh, Hammy still hasn't shopped 2,800 gold in his pocket. This is a rough spot for Adagio to be in, but fortunately for him, he's going to take the opportunity now to rotate down, and we'll get to see if he's committing into that weapon route or into that crystal route. Again, double crystal could be pretty risky here. Um, <laughs> okay, we just got duped. But a reflex block and some boots. Yummy can hit Frenzy perfectly timed on that reflex block, and he will, uh, will manage to block that one up. So we don't know yet. This is the big thing. His infantry is full. Pond in a lot of trouble here. T-Tiger's going to chase after him and scratch him down. The NCO does pick up that kill in the end. Rogue lose a member. Pond is going to fall here with level 6 up as well. Yeah, and Hammy now using a minion candy there to go ahead and help that wave get held up. Knowing that Pond died, this just buys them more time. It means that tribe can't come in and push the turret without a bit of time invested into doing so. And Hammy, the biggest troll NA, not letting us see if he is going with that weapon or crystal route. Anyway, so it's going to be exciting to see what he ends up going. That reflex block ended up working out for him. He blocked the yummy catnip frenzy. And it is a poison shiv here on Adagio Jaws. This is a weapon power Adagio for you. I'm excited. I'm still going to call you crazy, do you know what I am sorry. <laughs> I'm going to call Hammy a little bit crazy, but you aren't wrong. Weapon power on the Adagio. Here we go. I don't know what happened this patch to nominate to make everybody go, you know what, we're going to try everybody weapon power. And Adagio go was weapon a power strong Adagio. weapon carry for a very long time. His ability to get a lot of attacks down quickly, even if the empowerment isn't that strong, it's still an additional burst of damage on those basic attacks. Evil. He's in a lot of trouble. Triple Githium will, though, will help him out immensely. Impel does come through onto two people. That gold mine is still whacking away. T Tiger's in a lot of trouble. Burning alive, but they jump straight back in. They take out Pond. T Tiger still has to make his way out of that fight, but Hammy doing a lot of work over the wall. Speaking about over the wall, Yummy Cannon Frenzy used straight on top of Hammy. Tribe find the ace out of nowhere. And they're going to be able to take this turret as well. 
Yeah, I'm gonna take the turret and then we'll likely as a group turn down to that gold mine or even just a half rotation out of Pond's jungle. And the usefulness here of the weapon Adagio is getting that poison ship. You are against a grace. You'll be able to cut down some of that healing. Let's get into that last fight though. We see the gold mine started up by Tribe. They immediately turn their attention onto Evol, who doesn't have the defense yet to survive the damage from D'Enzio. It is forcing the fountain and Flask out on himself. T-Tigers dropped so low, but thanks to that fountain, he is gonna survive. And then a beautiful yummy catnip frenzy over the wall is gonna lock up Hammy. They turn their attention onto him. They turn their attention onto the turret. And that is going to be a huge advantage now starting to form for the side of Tribe. Okay, it iterations of uh, the Adagio build. We'll put it that way because, yeah, he he's been this uh, massive weapon power carry. Went straight into the crystal power, you know, then being more of a captain role. Uh, it's come full circle, and that's what I that's what I like. That's what I like seeing builds do. Come full circle, and I'm excited to see this, honestly, because Hammy pulling this one out, and bearing in mind they are number two seed right now, just under Cloud Nine, and they. They even took a game off of Cloud9 as well. This is a team that has really come out of nowhere, like everybody has been predicting. Yeah, and here Tribe has started up the sentry. It is down. I don't expect to see too much more aggression here. Have to see. You know, Tribe against Cloud9 at the Unified Finals was some of the best Vainglory I have ever spectated. It was absolutely crazy fights. This tribe roster has really come to their own through the second split of summer, and they're looking to continue it this time around as well. Obviously, with Cloud9 having a world's ticket secured, securing both of those spots, the runner-up to Cloud9, or if uh, Tribe can surpass Cloud9, whoever the highest seed without a world's ticket is, uh, will get that world's ticket for the autumn season, and Tribe... They've done a good cause so far, you know, they've brought down TSM and, you know, they're looking to come into this season now and get themselves in a good place. And, you know, if there's another team besides TSM, I'd like to see it Worlds. It would be this tribe roster right here. Yeah, that it would. X Immortals roster now. 4,000 gold in the lead are Tribe. Impale does land onto two people. Gideon Wall is big. That Crucible not quite used to his full effectiveness. Dio is going to get healed up versus Judgment Gets Channel. Comes down. Doesn't quite do much damage when you're full weapon power. Yummy yeah, Cannon Frenzy on the back line. Pongo fairly low, but underneath his own turret is going to get sniped by D'Enzio. And now it is only support or combat as Max Green and Evil face off 1v1. They end up parting ways. Four players dead. And will mean absolutely nothing apart from gold shifting hands. Yeah, and great plays on both sides of the map there. It was Evol with some amazing Lance plays, but D'Enzio got a triple active camo stun that allowed them to find some additional damage. Unfortunately for the side of Tribe though, T-Tigers used that Yummy Catnip Frenzy on that back line, it was under the turret fire at that point, and unfortunately, those turret shots rack up very quickly, especially on a low health, low defense assassin. So overall, Rogue, I think, actually gets a little bit better of the trade off there. They pick up a little bit of additional bounties uh, over the side of Tribe just due to how the kills work. And then obviously, they don't lose out on their turret either. So can't be too hurt if you are Rogue, but Tribe taking down the gold mine. They are still in the driver's seat, in my opinion, Jaws. Absolutely. I mean, you just look at the gold at that point, don't you? That's a good 350 gold going over to each member of Tribe. Now, they are sitting at about 5,000 gold lead. They've got a lot of vision down as well. Does look like Evo just wants to clear out some of it, it seems, but Tribe more than willing now to just push into Rogue's jungle. Rogue just need to open these turrets up here, Denominate. They need to be able to just secure this first one so they can do exactly the same thing. And I've just seen what Max Green's bought, and it's going to be an echo. The survivability for Tribe now is going to be very, very strong. Rogue, they're going to have to do something. A crystal Sentry is going to get fallen again. Max Green jumping on the back line. Two man holy Nova. There's the Unmechanic Frenzy straight on Evo. Evo is going to be the target, and he ends up falling first. Valkyrie from the back line, and Pond is going to be able to lock up T Tigers, but can he lock him up? for long enough the 1v1 t-tigers only just comes out on top oh. does end up going down anyway to i believe a minion and that will be tried the, the frost two guard mem was it the oh the right. frost guard damage minion over time over the wall no nope. and just hit him once but i was just the minions looking a bit too menacing in all honesty tried to end up taking down two members t-tigers the only one falling for them 
Yeah, and that was a incredibly questionable uh, call out of Rogue there. They were in a 2v3 scenario where they've already been losing out on the 3v3 fights. The Crystal Sentry was already dead to rights, and they came into a situation where it was them getting locked up, and they ended up giving away way more than they needed to. Fortunately, Pawn was able to get that damage over time onto T-Tigers, but now with that Aegis complete, T-Tigers is going to be a lot more sustainable against this Rhyme, and the movement's not going to matter as much as we get into this game. Everybody's going to start to upgrade their boots uh, here in the next couple minutes. But Tribe, you know, we're one fight away from Tribe really being an unbeatable force. Dienzio, three items now online for this Kestrel. T-Tigers already committed into the defense, almost at that broken myth. I just don't see the weapon Adagio working out thus far. He has got a Sorrow Blade, so he's doing a little bit more damage. They're going to go straight on him, but look at Dienzio's damage. Absolutely massive two-man gear. The Immortal Valkyrie comes down as well. Max Green is going to block it. The heal onto T-Tigers. Divine Sin Engine used already. Echo's going to get popped as well by Max Green to refresh the cooldown. Dienzio now in a 1v1 versus Hammy. Who wins that one? It's definitely going to be Dienzio, as he doesn't get another loaded chunk of health. T-Tigers actually going to 1v1. Eva was pawned. He actually just had to piece on out. Hammy gets the kill onto Dienzio, though, across the turret. Max Green looking for the benediction, but I'm not sure he's going to be able to find it. They lose a member each here. So again, once more, this is the tables have been leveled. Yeah, and what really worked out well for Hammy in that last fight was it looked like D'Enzio did clip one of those glimmer shots, not getting the full damage, just getting the crystal portion. But not only that is the, the trade-off in a 1v1 between the Adagio and the Kestrel, if Kestrel's using those glimmer shots and misses even one, because Adagio is getting more basic attacks out, he actually can win out on that trade. And that's where Hammy was able to win that 1v1. They both popped their block, and it ended up being Hammy that came out on top, saving the ace, and uh, you know keeping them in a position where they can still look to find another fight. You know, if, if that would have been an ace for Tribe, that would have been a turret, a gold mine. You know, that would have been a 10,000 gold lead by the time it was all said and done. All of the above. That's what it would have been. Everything on the map, please. Thank you very much. Tribe now pushing down at this lane once again. We are approaching the 15-minute mark denominator, and we've seen Tribe more or less in Rogue's Jungle 90% of this game, it feels like, at this point. Now, Evol, he's starting to get a little bit more tanky. Obviously, he's got the Echo now, something that we've seen prioritized by captains all too much at the moment. So double Githian Wall, double Impale, even if you really want to. Tribe are going to take this gold miner, the last of its kind. Evo is going to come in, does get the Githian Wall, that's going to get blocked up though. Another Githian Wall onto Dienzio. Divine Intervention comes through for Max Green, going to heal up the Kestrel. They're going to jump straight on in. Benediction onto three members, Holy Nova onto Evo. Ends up going down to the swipe, I believe, by T-Tigers. Janui Cannon Frenzy on Hammy, does go down, but now Pond in the 1v3. Can he make it work? Max Green going very low. Holy Nova does stun him up. He's already taken down Dienzio, the massive damage threat. Max Green digged up, diving and dodging. Out of the damage. T-Tiger finally finds the last portion of damage. Does take him out. T-Tiger's with the ace. Tribe are going to look to focus this turret now. Yeah, Tribe picks up the gold mine. Tribe picks up a turret as well off the back of that ace. Han again was able to find the damage onto Dienzio. Did kill him. Uh, Dienzio, however, working into that fourth offensive item, Let's which is likely go. going to be a second monocle. And that's going to allow him to have so much burst damage with those Glimmer Shots. But not only the Glimmer Shots, this is the same build that that Weapon Pedal runs. Getting into that replay, though, Hammy, uh, you know, okay. did get locked up. And T-Tigers, you know, again, was able to come through. Pond did find that kill onto Dienzio, but wasn't able to last on out. The cooldowns for the Rhyme, as well as the low energy. T-Tigers was able to come in with the Aftershock procs, get the kill and the tribe was able to get a lot off the back of that ace. All right, now. If this was in solo queue, Denomine, and your Adagio was going weapon power, after signaling he was going crystal, now I can't imagine how he would have done that, but he has got breaking point now. Is this the point of the game you say, okay, maybe the Adagio is now starting to come online, maybe he's now actually gonna start to do damage? I, it could definitely ramp up in the fights. He has to be the one to survive long enough and, you know, it's been, for the most part, Evol and Pawn. Well, Evol's been getting dropped pretty early, but Pawn has been the one that's been surviving the fights. So maybe now that Hammy is, you know, going to be ramping up damage, they might be able to turn the middle of a fight around. But with a Kraken now going over to the side of Tribe with a 9,000 gold lead, 
Three turrets will stand between Tribe and a victory, and Rogue has done all but uh, all but touch the first turret of Tribe. So if you're a Tribe fan right now, you're looking pretty good, you're happy, your team's doing good, and uh, you just gotta hope that they don't overcommit to this Kraken push. We see these teams all too often overcommit on a Kraken push, give up an ace, and with the lead that Tribe has, if Rogue's able to find kills here, if they're able to find an ace, if they're able to find even two kills in a Kraken, that would be a hefty amount of gold that goes back into Rogue's pocket. There also be a lot of time in those turrets as well. 16 minutes on the clock, that Kraken. Been unleashed by Tribe. These turrets will fall very quickly. Dienzio just rips through them. Bracken are very well defended as well. Pon, Hammy, they're going to have to do some meme work. Evo's doing meme work right now. Valkyrie onto two members. Sea Tiger's already in the back line though. Dienzio completely left alone. Yummy Cannon Frenzy on the Adagio. And Hammy's already fallen. The big heal onto T Tiger's to keep him alive. Kraken still marching on the base. Max Green fairly low, but still has another divine intervention to his name. Pon is just trying to take out T Tiger's best he might, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. Crystal's now going to get focused. The turrets are gone. The team is gone. Rogue falls in game number one to Tribe. Tribe coming in strong today, Jaws. This Kestrel pick for Dienzio was absolutely huge, but not only that, T-Tigers with a massive performance on the Kashka, one of his most comfortable picks. And then obviously Max Green over here on the Grace as well. Those double-defined interventions keeping T-Tigers alive was absolutely huge.